Beloveds in Christ, through the waters of baptism, we are brought into the family of God. In this family, some are queer and some are straight, some are trans and some are cisgender. The body of Christ is rich in diversity, a community of people um, of many genders, races, body types and sizes, abilities and hungers, each a glimpse of God through a different angle. God claims us with delight. We claim one another's companions. In our baptismal vows, we promise to love and support each other, working together to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in all its forms within us and around us. We need each other. Today, we remember that the love we encounter through the waters cannot be undermined by bigotry or hate by inclusion or injustice. We are children of the Holy One, siblings of the life of God. These, these family ties cannot be broken. No one and nothing has the power to turn us away from our Creator. We cannot be kicked out or partially accepted. The full embrace of God always extends to us. And so today, we will be invited to remember our baptism. We also remember that through this new life in Christ, we are set free to love wildly, to live with pride in who we are and what God has seen us through, and to claim the power God has given us to turn from everything that destroys. Through God's grace, we leave behind shame, and rejoice in the good news that sets the captives free. As you gather this morning, we invite you to join us in singing Blue Boat Home. If you are in person, we invite you to stand if you are able, but if you are joining us online, we invite you to sing loud and strong from your couch, your porch, and especially if you're walking in the neighborhood. We welcome one another as we join our voices together.
As if we could call you anything other than beloved and blessed, drenched as we are in our love for you, washed as we are by our delight in you, born anew as we are by the grace that flows from the heart of the one who bore you to us. This light centers us. It is the blending of the memory of saints and dear ones. This illumination reminds us that our questions, our creativity, our imagination will guide us as we strive to live as followers of the way of Jesus. Divine pool of droplets. As we gaze into your lakes and rivers, we honor the waters you designed on this earth. Your seashores remind us of your design of this planet and all your gifts that allow us to flourish. Bless the tides and oceans, bless the rains that dance upon the dirt, fill out our jars with clean water. May your stream continue to flow, gifting clean waters to all neighbors. May this water be easily attained by people in all cities and countries. Keep all of our children hydrated and refreshed. Amen. May the peace in the waters of our lives be with you. For those of us um, who are here online today, we invite you to share the ancient greeting in your chat line. For all of us who are in the sanctuary today, we invite you to turn to the cameras to say hello to those of us who are worshiping online. And for those of us who are here in the sanctuary today, it is now time to share our greetings with one another. Press a little flesh. Pastor Jen, one more time. Good morning. Oh, there it is. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so good to be back. Uh, Pastor Jen, my pronouns are she, her, hers. 
and just thrilled to get to share this morning. So much goodness already. For those of you that made it to breakfast, oh my gosh, we had a treat this morning. I think there's still more to be had. Um, but I do want to pause to all those that helped to cook. Can we say thank you? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, they were here super duper duper early this morning. So it is back, um, I believe, the second Sunday going forward. We'd like to share in this joy of a meal uh, before church and then maybe a little bit after whatever's left. So please come eat so much good food uh, this morning. So uh, if you're here in person, lots of ways you can check in with us. Uh, you can hold your phone up to this QR code like you're going to take a picture. And then that's an opportunity to share any information that you'd like us to have or to know. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to connect, to go for a walk or have further conversation. Uh, so a place for that. If you're online, uh, there's a link that you can follow there. Again, not essential, but just so we can know with whom we're worshiping. If you want to leave a name and any other information so we can connect throughout the week. There is a place I forgot in the back of the bulletin you could write that down. So if you don't want to mess with technology in church... I get it, that's okay too. Um, it's okay to play with technology, it's okay to not play with technology. So you can just write that there on the back of your program uh, this morning, or just write it on the program if it's not actually there. Uh, Coffee and Conversation is continuing on Tuesdays at 10.30, so we'll be at the Dancing Mule. This is a real lovely space for conversation. If this is not a time you can get to and you would be interested um, in another time to share for coffee and conversation or tea and conversation, uh, reach out again through that, that form or call us in the office and let us know and we'll find another time to be together. Breakfast. So you may have seen, as you came up, a lot of signs. Um, we walked past them and my children were like, ooh, don't touch, where do I, wait, no, don't touch. <laughs> Uh, so there's this, this new turf. It's really exciting. The school got a grant to put this down, um, and we had a few delays because of rain and life and et cetera, but it's happened. So by tomorrow, um, I believe it should be done. So we'll see the fullness of this. Um, so we're very, very excited, and we're, we're happy to help be a contributing partner to make this happen. It will really, really, really make a difference um, for our kiddos there on the playground. So just a reminder, as of tomorrow, you can touch it as much as you want to your heart's content. Go play and do cartwheels. Some of us, probably not all of us, but... Valerie uh, Kerr, who we read um, her work, See No Stranger, uh, I believe a couple years ago now, fabulous, incredible story, uh, will be at Drury. This is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Um, it's Monday, September 18th. Uh, she'll have a conversation on diversity and reconciliation, and the event um, is free. So this is one, if you have the space and time, um, or you know of others who might be interested, you don't want to miss this event. An incredible, incredible thing. Um, and I'm sure if you have more questions about it, Peter in the back can tell you a little bit more about that. But we're so glad that she's going to be here in Springfield and the opportunity to hear her and see her. So just a word about that. Peter, yeah. Okay, so... So Wednesday at noon is the deadline for lunch. So again, you can talk to Peter for more details about that. Super cool opportunity. We are going to be at Black Tie again this year. We have a table. Uh, if you are interested in being at the table, uh, please see Ashley Quinn for more information and to sign up for that. The event is Saturday, November 11th. I believe the tickets are already all sold out. So this is a really, really exciting event and celebration this year. Um, again, if you're interested in being a part of the representation of National Avenue in our table, we do still have a few spots left. Our series uh, is Creation, Living Our Calling. So Caitlin uh, will take us on this just incredible journey from what it is to be Christian and indigenous as she thinks about and holds the land. So we'll be sharing in some conversation. If you want to read along, Disciples on the Edge will be reading the book Native, um, which is one Ashley Fleming actually suggested years ago. It's such a good, good, good book. Um, so you can read along about that or just know this will be part of us thinking about and holding a conversation about creation together. So as part of that, we're actually going to go be in creation together and take some walks. So a couple different opportunities so far. This Friday, uh, the 15th at 8 a.m., for anyone that would be interested, we'll meet at the Botanical Gardens there at the center and just go for a walk and listen together. So this Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday, October 1st, I think 1 p.m. We'll, we'll see what works with lunch and picnics, or et cetera. Um, but Sunday after church, we'll meet at the Nature Center um, October 1st. If neither of those times work and you're interested in doing another one, um, reach out to us and we'll put out some other dates and locations. But again, just a chance to go listen 
and be present and share in this experience together as part of our creation series. So today is a really exciting day. You're going to hear a lot more about this, but King, we are delighted to get to share in baptism and celebration of this day with you today. So just a quick nod about what's coming. As a part of that, we will be invited to remember the waters of our own baptism, those of us who've walked through that practice that may not be all of us, but an invitation to think and hold that space together as we surround King this morning. Next, oh, yes, sorry, there's baby Mabel, uh, we celebrate, gosh, it's a great picture. Um, also, we're mindful, uh, Jody is, is stuck um, there, I'm sure she would love to be just holding on a baby. Uh, she has COVID, as many of us do right now, so um, celebrate and welcome Mabel into uh, to our midst, as well as um, hold Jody as she waits to get home, <laughs> so hopefully we'll see her into the week ahead, and she's doing okay, um, but just mindful of, of her today as well. Blessing of the Annals will be coming up um, Sunday, September 17th at 2 p.m. This has um, become a beloved tr annual tradition of bringing in all of our furry companions and friends. Um, some of us, uh, I don't think we've actually brought in our cats yet. I feel like cats are a little trickier in the space, but you can bring a picture of your cat um, if it's not helpful for you or your cat to come in. Um, and of course, our, our furry friends are welcome or other creatures that you might have that live with you. Um, it's also a time to remember beloved companions. So if, if there's one that has been a dear one to us, we can still bring um, and hold the gift in memory of, of our beloved companions that have walked with us. So again, that'll be uh, the... The 17th, so a couple, no, that's next Sunday. Is that next Sunday already? Oh my goodness. Okay, so next Sunday, we'll be sharing that together. Nora's baby blessing will be next Sunday. We get to share in the joy um, of what it is to say yes to surrounding Nora and Ashley and Justin um, in a time. So just a heads up and know that that's coming next Sunday too. Elders will be meeting next Sunday, so just a, a nod and note to elders. Uh, next Sunday evening, we'll be gathering at Robin's home. And the board meeting will be meeting today, so that, that chance to go grab a little bit to eat, and then if you're interested in learning what's happening in the life of the church, um, anyone is welcome. They're open meetings to share together. Justice is meeting. We have a lot going on. One minute, one minute of justice after, right before the board meeting. So fullness of life we gather, um, of community, of so many moments to stand in celebration, so much goodness. I'm going to invite us just to pause to breathe, to hold this goodness as we are attentive to one another, what is ours to do in this space and the sweetness of what it is to live and share in community as we turn and now hear the words from our sacred text this morning. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven spitting open and the splitting open, and the Spirit, like a dove, coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my Son, whom I dearly love, in you I find happiness. And from the letter to the community in Galatia, Galatians chapter 3. You are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus. All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with, G with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now if you belong to Christ, then indeed you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise a reading to ground us in our tradition. We learn and relearn our work in creation. I'd like to invite you into this time of prayer with a quiet moment of reflection a moment of stillness and calm to center yourself in our space.
creative maker, divine companion. In the beginning, your spirit hovered over the waters, nurtured life in the dark and chaotic, and brought forth gifts of an abundant earth and a diverse creation. As evil grabbed hold and human betrayal took the form of enslavement, you delivered your people through the Red Sea and made promises of lands of rest and freedom. As the struggle continued under forces of empire, you raised up prophets and priests, comforters and companions. From the waters of Mary's womb, Jesus was born. He taught us of sharing bread and seeking liberation, turning over tables and miracles of restoration. He called people into God's ancient movement of solidarity all the way to the cross, trusting in the power of resurrection. And still, O oh God, you hear the cries of your people and all of creation groaning. We remember the declarations of indigenous kin that water is life, that this resource is sacred and in need of our protection, and that the fate of these waters is tied both spiritually and physically to all our thriving. May your spirit bless the waters before us, making them once again an encounter with your presence, calling us into depths of love and righteousness. Amen. My family vacationed in Hot Springs, Arkansas a few years ago. We didn't know much about the park, just seemed like a good place, reasonable drives from where we could get to. Didn't know much about the water, other than it had been sought by people for potential healing. There are lots of lore and really cool stories around it. The water was accessible in a lot of ways. So we found that there were these faucets where you could go and get water to drink and touch the water, and you could hike and you could see it and touch it and then taste the water. Touching this warm to hot water was a whole new experience to me. I have grown up playing in cold water springs, but hot water, this was a whole new thing. But then, then I learned that the water I was touching was over 4,000 years old. What? Like, I mean, they talked to us about it like this, that it is rain that had fallen on pyramids and then the way it makes its way through the aqueducts and through the, the things, it's just mind-blowing to me. Water that had fallen as rain and supported life for people so long before my lifetime. So I, again, I, I, I like really appreciate the science and tried to fully wrap my head around it, but I can't even comprehend that water that I touched and tasted. Ancient water, ancestral water, life-giving water that supported human life long before my lifetime and will continue to support life for generations to come. The water of hot springs is a great and beautiful mystery. I know God is there in that great and beautiful mystery and in all those deep connection of rain droplets. Most of the time, I don't really think about water. I mean, right, like we go to the sink, we brush our teeth, right, okay, all right, did my thing, go over to the dishes, wash, clean, throw things in the laundry. I don't think about, I have access to this water, this thing all the time around me. I'm very conscientious of trying to make sure I drink all the water to stay hydrated. Like, I have my bottle, right? I work on that. I do think about that water, I guess. Mindful that up to 60% of our bodies are made of water. The water is this vital nutrient to the life of every single cell in our body, acting as that first building material, regulating our internal body temperatures and by sweat and respiration, and that the carbohydrates and the proteins of our bodies take this food and metastasize and transportate water through our bloodstreams, acting as a thing to help shock and protect our brains and spinal cords. I told you I got really lost in the science of this. It's so fascinating, right? Like, water is incredible. So we often stop in this place, we did it this morning already, and thought about the breath in our body. But I want to invite you to take a moment to meditate on that water that's functioning as droplets, part of your cell, just to feel the water in your body moving and flowing right now. 
Water that's been around for longer than we can comprehend, helping to care for life far beyond what we know. Just take a moment. God is there in the connections and the fabric of creation. And as we lean in and we understand more of the processes of what's happening, we can also stand in awe of this power and this force that has moved and is part of us, with, this, with us always long before us and will be here long after us in other ways. So when we, we go back a little further in history, we know water played a different role in the homes and the streets where Jesus walked. So last week, I, I talked a little bit at the table about bodies, bodies of water and the fishing industry. Water was another point of tension as it was essential and, and not available to all people. So the ancients were working on systems of aqueducts and trying to make it more accessible in lots of different ways, but, but homes that had access to water, those were wealthy homes that could even begin to do that. So water being public, we know so much of disease and health issues rose from the lack of access to clean water and proper sanitation, which is something that's hard maybe for us to even imagine living where we do here. Siblings in our other part of the country or other part of the world potentially some that in our neighborhood may not have that access. So for us here, we can think about, oh, yes, clean water. We can, again, walk to the kitchen sink, to the bathroom. But those of us in developing countries may not always have access like that, to clean water at all times. So as we look towards our future and our relationship with creation, we know we're going to have a lot more conversations about water and who has access to water, to clean water, but to water, period. We know that the water has fallen, is rain all over the planet, and we can share water now, and the access or lack thereof is a matter of, those, of conversation for those of us who follow the way of Jesus to hold. One will walk further into and continue to hold, especially as those around us of indigenous nature remind us and tell us about the need to have this conversation. But this morning, as we hold the ritual of baptism, as we hear an invitation to wade into the water, to go down to the river, to make public affirmations, to discern how we might support one another. Again, it's an important for us to maybe look back to the ancient roads and water for a moment. The stories of our tradition tell us of John the Baptist, who stood in the river baptizing those who longed to make a public affirmation of an internal transformation. It was a way to speak ritually of making oneself clean and acknowledging that there's something that needs to change in our community, something that we can affirm and look towards together. Water washes away the dirt. Water offers refreshment. Water is absolutely essential for us to live. So we are mindful and think of this invitation to walk into the water with intention with hope, with a way of visioning who we are and who we might become together. Thinking back again long to John the Baptist, we hear that this is a personal invitation and it is about a community saying yes together and how that might shape and flow us forward together. Our conversation partner with creation this series Caitlin Curtis, in her book, Native, she talks about identity, belonging, and rediscovering God as we consider our relationship to the water as a powerful starting place. And I'll share so much more of her stories, but for this morning, she reminds us as a part of being Christian and growing up in a Christian tradition and the Potawatomi Nation, she tells us and tells stories of Native flood stories and the importance of what comes after the flood. She asked these questions. What if our stories of baptism in the church were rooted in the idea of new beginnings of personhood, just like the new beginning after a flood, after everything is drenched and overcome? What might we learn from the water? What might we learn if we listen, if we wade in unafraid, untethered, uninhibited, ready to become the ones we were created to be. This summer, water was one of my greatest teachers. 
I practiced stillness in the water. I slowed down. I got to know the sound of an osprey. I didn't, I've heard it before, but this summer I, I listened and I can tell you, I don't know the call myself, but I know what they sound like and my Merlin app can respond really well to them. So I've got that. I watched the plat- pattern of blue herons as they would squawk, you come up on them on the river, not even fast, but they would get real mad at you and tell you all about it and fly on down the river. But they would show you where to go fish next. I really appreciated them. Many of my dearest moments this summer were practicing stillness, touching the water, paying attention, being present. It was there that I remember who I am. Even though the waters may be ancient, they continue to shift and to flow. By seeing and knowing these stories of our siblings, our ancestors, we tap into the wideness of wisdom. Nature is a great teacher. The rivers remind us everything changes. It always is. Trees are falling down, storms coming along, erosion is happening, rapids will come, and there'll be places we get to just float and listen. As we think about these waters, and today this invitation to remember our own baptisms, I suspect Several of us have these beautiful memories of us saying yes to the water around us, yes to this invitation. I know many of us also have complicated relationship with our baptisms. We appreciate a tradition that we got to step into for families that surrounded us in love, and yet too many of us did not have an invitation to step into life-giving waters. We were given traditions that have hindered us, that have caused us harm and real trauma, and yet, here we are. We're willing to do the work of love, to stay curious, and to keep searching for new waters. It's not a one-time moment. It's a moment that invites us again and again to take whatever happens, whatever comes along, and keep searching for life in these new waters. We shared it in the liturgy this morning. We've said it in lots of different ways. But we know that these waters are a call to us into a kinship of full acceptance. Not a partial, not parts of us, but the whole of us that we are loved and free to love. Every single one of us. And then to share that love and help to discern that in the deepest of community. That's what happens. When we come together unafraid, untethered, uninhibited, and willing to step out into the water together, we might end up on a really wild ride. But the waters of our life can teach us if we will let them. God's presence is deep in the water of our lives. They are inviting us to get ready. It's time to get ready. Even if we're not sure God is there calling us, our ancestors are there calling us, creation is there calling us, calling us to listen. So this week, I want to invite you to try something. To pay attention to the water of your life. So maybe some of you have access to a river or a creek or planning um, some trip to the lake. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's a great space. Maybe it will be the rain that's forecasted this week. Maybe for some of us, it's just slowing down when we get in the shower or when we turn on the faucet to wash our hands. As you touch water this week, take a moment. Connect to that water that is around you, within you. Feel this love that is flowing. Pay attention. May it be so. We are invited to surround King, who is making something public, that he's coming to know in his own being, a sense of faith and mystery, that he's affirming and saying yes to this call in his life. As we think about our own lives, this is an invitation to each of us as community. So I invite you to hold this question, to think about how we will say yes to supporting and walking with King. King, I want to invite you to come forward. We're going to meet at the table. I'm going to share a few words and then ask a question of you, okay? 
Siblings in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we come to under, understand ourselves as family in God's lineage of love and liberation. For centuries, people have been drawn to the holy water to find assurance of belovedness and everlasting potential for transformation, to know and practice kinship, choosing each other as family, to encounter God's love through this offering of the earth, and to publicly bear witness to whom and what we devote ourselves into this world. As ones baptized into the lineage of prophets and saints, ancestors and elders, and beloveds of shared heart and spirit, we gather around you, King. We pause to remember the wideness of this community. So, King, I ask you, do you promise to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself as you follow in the way of Jesus? Yes. Well, shall we go to the water? Yeah. All right. We're going to join together in singing, and we'll see you inside the water.
entered these waters. We remember the words at Jesus' baptism, you are my beloved, with you I am well pleased. King, may you hear these words for you today. May you hear God say to you, you are my beloved, with you I am well pleased. You are free to love and to be loved. We know God's love was with Jesus before his baptism and was with him after. And so God's love has been with you and will be with you always. This is a visible moment, a sign of invisible grace. Entering these waters points to love and is one way that we can say yes to affirm God's call in our lives. These waters are like a hug from God. In these waters, we affirm that we bring many names. So King, I'm going to invite you. We have a blessing to share for King. This blessing was written by Claudia, but she could not be here today. So it's going to be read by some of the members of UNO. King, as this community, we pray the light and laughter are filled in your soul always and that you have the courage to share it with others. King, as this community, we pray you continue to grow in following the Jesus way. We delight in getting to be companions with you. King, King, we share a great hope that your life journey is surrounded with love and grace. We pray you give the same grace to others. <coughs> King, we pray, King, we pray you find the strength you need during the hard times and for rest when it is needed. May the waters of May the waters of your baptism bring you faith, hope, and joy for this life journey. The offering will now be given and received.
Thank you that we are present here today to experience the joy of King's baptism. Thank you for his example of being open to God's love and calling for our lives. Let this community be a pillar of support as we discover together how to follow in the way of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. A quick word as you come forward today. It seems we've talked a lot about water. We've listened to water. Today we want to invite you at the table as part of this celebration to actually touch the water. So there are two basins that are set up here. So as you take communion this morning by intinction, you'll be invited to put your hands under the water to touch the water or not, as is yours to, to take. This is water that has come out of the baptistry um, this morning, so we all get to experience and touch and feel and be a part of this moment of remembrance together. Baptized into the dreams of God, we share the sacred waters and make our alliances public. Togetherness, love, mess and complexity, sharing at table, pursuing justice, resisting forces of evil, within and around. Practicing moral imagination, struggle, the waters are all consuming. No part of our lives go, in, go untouched. In all things they remind us, our lives are bound together by the one who claims us each as beloved. At this table we hold the sacred story. We remember Jesus' invitation to practice welcome, to practice love. And today we celebrate what happens in the waters at the tables and the waters of our lives. The dust of the past, shame and guilt are washed away. The bonds of love are restored and the possibility of new life emerges again and again. May it be so for us today as we gather at the table, as we remember our baptisms, as we touch the water. May your spirit be upon this water and all who gather as we celebrate this sacred family to which you have called us. Strengthen us in love for one another as we renew our commitment to the pursuit of the kingdom of God, where all your creatures and creations are beloved and free. Amen. Pray with me. Spirit that flows through all living things, through the sacrament of baptism, we get a glimpse of how your spirit envelops each of us and connects us to each other. The water acts as the binding agent, the pool in which all of our souls swim. We felt that today as King committed to his journey of connectedness. Likewise, we are reminded weekly of our connectedness as we come to the table. As the waters of baptism bind us, so do the bread and cup of the communion table. Through this sacrament, we are reminded of our deep connections to and dependence upon each other and you. May we feel your spirit move through us and bind us as we gather at the table today. Amen.
I'm going to invite you to come back up here with me when we stand and join in singing. We have one final thing for you. Before we do that, as we start to sing together, I just again want to say a huge, huge thank you. Uh, there were a lot of exciting and wonderful and moving parts today. So for music, for worship leaders, for those who stepped in, for elders, deacons, all that made this day possible for tech, thank you. For the gift of it, it is to be community. To each of you for being present in this moment, uh, for listening, for paying attention, for singing, for making this space come to life here and online, thank you for being with us today. I hope that you will stay after we sing together and join us for a cup of coffee or linger for a moment or go grab some. There's beautiful fresh produce to grab, another bite to eat or stay for the board meeting as is right and good for your soul. Wish you blessings wherever, however you find your way off to the waters today. Before we leave this place, let us stand and join our hearts as we're able. Let us stand and join our hearts and voices together as we sing Wind Upon the Waters. you'll find a bunch of blank pages, but the hope is, as you're writing your story or drawing your story, that you'll keep track of the moments where you see new life and hope. I'm going to ask you about this. This is not a test, but I'm just curious. I'm excited to see what you will add. So this is a gift from us to you, King. I'm going to leave it here because I've, I've asked King. He's going to stay here so you can come forward and greet him um, and give him love today. So he'll be here waiting for you. Let us join in our words of the journey. 
Together we have shared baptism. We've heard the call to discover new ways to follow, to follow the way of Jesus. We give our support to King as he celebrates this moment. We will support one another on this journey to love wildly, to live with pride in who we are and what God has seen through us, and to claim the power God has given us, to turn from everything that destroys. Through God's grace, we leave shame behind and rejoice in the good news that sets the captives free. Remember, you are free to love and be loved. Remember, you are free to love and be loved. Amen.